Welcome, welcome everybody to Arizona Real Estate News. We are back on with Pat, what's your rate, McMasters, the dynamic duo of Jackie and Ruby of Century 21 Arizona Foothills. Happy Hi, Thursday. Hi. Hello. How's the weather <laughs> down there? It's beautiful. It's getting hot. I love it. Is it, it getting hot? Let me check ours here. Let's see. I think uh, it's currently 65 it's, degrees uh, here. It's what? 65 degrees here. Six, five, Where six, are you six, at? Yeah. His house. His house. Oh, in your house, house maybe. <laughs> we are sunny and 58. Wow. wow. Going to hit a high of 61. Ooh. It's really happy for when you. When you're in the sun, it feels great. As soon as you get out, you're freezing your ass off. So, <laughs> but uh, I was looking around uh, yesterday, kind of tooling around the web, looking at real estate headlines and uh, getting prepped for the day. And the thing that popped out at me is, uh, once again, the headlines that get the attention, you know, if you go to a certain <laughs> website and there's an article and uh, and it reminded me of uh, one of my friends up here. I saw him a couple of weeks ago. He goes, I hear real estate's really bad, down like 30 percent. And I go, where are you reading your news? And but then it dawned on me, you know, his house is paid off. He doesn't really care. But every once in a while, a headline catches your attention like. Like this, I'm going to show you this one. And then, Pat, I want to circle back to you and talk about, you know, are we stuck at seven? Where, uh, you know, because that's one of the other headlines. We're above 7%. Here we go. It's going to be eight. It's going to be nine. And Terry has a bet with me that we're going to be 9% by the end of the year. So I'm saving for another dollar that I don't <laughs> think I'm going to have to spend. So I think I'm going to win this one. Revealed the nine U.S. cities. Our homeowners are losing thousands on their home values. Medium sales price San Francisco drops a staggering 220000 for from a year ago. This is from the UK. So they name all these cities. From the UK. U.S. So the Metro's U rapidly reduced sales price. Boise down 15. Oakland down 16. San Francisco down 13. They don't mention Phoenix, but... They're, they're taking it from the top of the market. And what really got me in this article, and it's true, because we, you know, we did go down 17% from the peak in April, right? But they make the comment in here, and I, I can't find it right now, I had to go back and look at it, that it's still going on. And it's saying, you know, um, the data was compiled by Redfin and marks a shift in the real estate landscape. And it's going on in the article to say that prices are still coming down. So if you look here in Redfin, so I went immediately to Redfin to see if I could find it. Here's the median sales price. And this is what they're talking about here, right? All these cities. So they've certainly dipped right here from the peak here in April, but every one of them now are going up. They don't make any mention of that in the UK. So if you're in the UK and you read that, you're, you think we're doomed. Case Schiller says, home price declines may have come to an end. Phoenix sees a 0.5% gain. Now, Kate Schiller is usually about two to three months behind. So they're already saying, and they're not, they're not too far off. They're fairly accurate in their projections versus core logic, but they're saying, you know, this might be the end. So, uh, but that's not making headlines. That didn't make any bold headlines. And here we are again, here's April. This is where all those articles are based off of. And this is where we're at now. So we did plunge, but we're on our way. We're crawling our way back. We're actually not crawling our way back. <clears throat> it's uh, coming up actually more than just about anybody expected. And mostly because of this right here with our inventory being as low as it is. Now I have a ticker across the bottom here that's showing where we're at, which is new listings and new contracts. See how they're 2771. We're normally hanging around 3000 to 3,100. Yeah. But is Memorial. that Memorial day in there? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it makes it to where these numbers, <clears throat> you just have to, ignore them on the seven day moving average for at least another week, week and a half. Cause, mm -hmm. but it shows you just how low contracts can get, you know, getting down that 2,700 level. So everybody at had our, a good Memorial day weekend. <laughs> at our low, 
weren't we down in 2008 ish, like down to 2300 or 1900, something like that? Yeah, I think it was closer to 23. Yeah. And what the interesting thing is, is the normal or the typical when I look at the extremes, surprisingly, is I think it was something like um, 2700. Um, I'll, I'll pull that up in a minute. But Pat, to you, um, I noticed there's a trend whenever rates go up and they get above seven. The articles and the comments, especially on YouTube, here we go. We're going to see 8%. We're going to see 9%. When rates are going up, people feel like this is it. The floodgates are open. Rates are going up. What, what are you seeing? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've been hearing that. I mean, you hear that. Obviously, people get um, whipsawed by the news. But, I mean, today we had, a, you know, the jobs report came out. Uh, basically, we had job. Yeah, I think it was like 270, I think, well, give me one second here, what was the number? Um, 278,000 job creations, which was stronger than, I guess they expect about 180,000. But we saw, you know, the bond market, um, you know, with a strong number, you think that the market would kind of get hit. I mean, we saw this positive uh, response the last couple of days. This was the, once again, from May 11th to just a couple of days, you know, May 25th, <clears throat> this is ch uh, Chinese water torture because with the debt ceiling issue that they had, um, it's been kind of re getting resolved. So we saw a good, nice response to bonds the last couple of days. I mean, <clears throat> that's this bounce is kind of what I was expecting here. Um, you know, you know, obviously this is kind of a painful, but we see a nice response. We're still seeing this channel, though. I mean, you look, you pull back rates. This is the channel since November, right in here, this channel that we're seeing, you know, back obviously in February, we saw rates get into the, <clears throat> you know, um, or actually down here, excuse me, this is prices, uh, March, middle of March, they got beaten down. But, you know, there's some strength right in here, this channel. And I mean, right now we're seeing the Federal Reserve, I mean, mortgage rates right now are, the, are obviously the lowest they've been in two weeks. Um, but the feds, you got June 14th coming up. You know, it's really just a matter of <clears throat> you had federal, some Federal Reserve officials saying, you know, they want to pause um, versus a skip. I mean, you know, there's there's different terminology, skipping versus pausing, you know, pausing. I read that, that this morning. I thought that was interesting. You may want to skip this increase. Yeah. Skip the increase versus a pause. I mean. Just look at those, and Barry kind of went over that this morning. You know, pause basically means we're still going to keep the pedal on the metal. Um, it, it just, you know, skipping, what does skipping mean? So, and you got these Federal Reserve officials, you know, some are saying, um, you know, that uh, there's, you know, we got to see what the data is. Other ones are saying, you got this one lady, I think it's Loretta Scribner. I can't remember her name, but she's a Cleveland, you know, She's been wrong from the get-go the last couple of years. They've all been really kind of wrong. So, But, I mean, mortgage rates right now, are, it's just going to be kind of, a, I think, stuck in this range. Um, the BLS report's coming out tomorrow. So it's it's just kind of a battle back and forth. You see these short-term you know, dips, and then you see it kind of comes back. It hits resistance and kind of comes back. So I think what I've seen the last six months, it seems like the low – the mid sevens is kind of their tipping point, And then they kind of back off to about the mid the high sixes. So, <clears throat> I mean, so the, the run up to eight is probably not on the radar anytime soon I, versus what. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just, you know, I'm just taking an educated guess. I think anytime we see the, the run up to, you know, low sevens, mid sevens, I mean, you really see a slowdown. I think the feds realize that if they, you know, obviously they don't have direct, you know, there's a kind of indirect correlation, but, you know, if you saw rates run up to eight, eight and a half, I mean, we saw what the big run up was with uh, these regional banks with their assets that they're holding on. Um, I just, it would cause a lot of issues, I think, and they know that. And I see it, I see, if I was a betting man, I'd see rates subsiding lower than going higher. That's well, uh, dynamic duo here, what, what are your clients what do you think their vibe is? Do they do they think rates are about to go higher? Do they think sales are down thirty percent? Uh, or is that just my friends up here? <laughs> <laughs> well, none of my none of my clients I'm working with right now are mentioning the interest rates um, 
or being fearful of that. So um, we're just hitting the pavement. Muddling right along. Jackie, yeah. you hearing anything? Yeah. So I, I think they're getting kind of used to it. Um, I have had a couple people recently ask me, weren't rates supposed to come down? And of course, I was talking about it too to a lot of clients. Like, you know, we all thought in May we were going to see a shift. Um, and, and I I think me personally, I think now, I think we're going to settle in around that six and a half, six and three quarters area. And if we stay there, I think people are okay with that. They're used to it. it it's once you tick over that 7%. Now, I will tell you the biggest word I'm hearing right now is new builds. I have had clients that we hadn't even discussed new builds. I had a client that came in. He sold his house in Florida. Um, been working with them for six months because was waiting for him to get his house sold. And uh, he's been sending me properties. Never, ever. I asked him in the beginning if he had any interest. You know, when we first talked to a client, we kind of get their criteria. Where are they looking? He had mentioned Buckeye right in the beginning because he wanted to be as close as he could to San Diego. And uh, I asked him in the beginning, are you interested in looking at new builds? Because I'm like, there's a ton of new builds and great deals out there. And he was like, nope, I have no interest. I don't want to, I don't want to get involved with a new build. I don't want to have to do landscape. I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to have to do that. I'm like, that's okay. That's fine. And uh, right before he came in, he sent me one property. I think it was um, a Lennar and wanted to look at that. And other than that, he had sent me a whole bunch of other regular resale homes. That Lennar was gone. And so I decided to take him out to DR Horton and didn't even act interested. Now, when we went into DR Horton, he was a little upset because the he, he came to us as a company generated and the lender he was assigned to was the reason we got him. Um, and that lender... It, he his denial kept I mean his his loan amount kept dropping because of the rates changing so anyways long story short he he didn't even act interested in the new build but when we went into the new build the rep told him well we can get you a fixed 4.99 percent interest rate we'll give you five thousand toward concessions and they said they had a fifty thousand dollar price reduction on the home not really I mean the home was priced where the home should be it's just that's gets them in the door and uh, because all the other houses were priced appropriately, too, and it was worth what they had it priced at. I don't see the $50,000 price reduction, just a gimmick. Anyways, he must have looked at 40 different resale homes. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, he calls me and he says, I want to go with the DR Horton new build, all because of the interest rate. And he was able to buy $100,000 more in house. And he loved the house and he got exactly what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a lot of clients suddenly asking me about new builds. So the headlines, oh, not the headlines, but some of the YouTube things I'm thinking where new builds are reducing their pr prices are plummeting. They're going down fifty, eighty thousand dollars. That that's just a sales gimmick, marketing gimmick. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's just that's flashing. what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Because when you, I, I mean, I still will look at the comps on a new bill to see, you know, what on the pricing. And he even asked me, I said, the house wasn't, so the house was 400. I'm like, the house wasn't worth 450. I don't know if they're even priced it at 450 because it only showed an MLS as 400. And so there was so no they can do that. You can, you can walk in and they can tell you, you just reduced it $50,000. You have no way of checking anything. Right. Absolutely. Except maybe a printout. <laughs> right. Except what? Hey, a flyer. Yeah. Hey, Jack, we talked about, I mentioned that a couple months ago. It just seems like, uh, you know, I, yeah, I deal in the new build market. Once in a while, I'll get a deal from there. Obviously, you know, compete with the, the their lenders. But uh, just, I'm amazed. And I mean, I think we talked about this before. I brought this up. But it just seems like there's a, a totally different market between new homes and resale as far as, the dynamics. I mean, you got the yeah. builders playing games with the prices and the concessions and, you know, it's, it's a totally different market. It really is. It's, it's, they from have a, their a, own set a, of, they, from a deal standpoint, from a deal making standpoint. Yeah. They have their own set of rules that they, they go by. Um, but I am finding that we are able, I'm working with a client um, in the master plan, master plan community of Sterling Grove out in surprise right now. And um, even though they just they dropped the price of the home forty thousand because it 
came back from being a buyer's, uh, a buyer fell through. Um, so they said they had dropped the price for uh, 40,000. So we went ahead and asked if they would drop it another 10. So we're in the middle of negotiating whether or not they will drop it more. So a lot of times people don't realize when you go into a new build community, especially on these inventory homes or homes that have fallen out or that are already in process, that sometimes you can negotiate a lower price on that or get more incentives to buy down that interest rate. There's so many valuable things that our buyers are missing out on when they're not represented going into a new build. Oh, absolutely. I, I think you'll agree between the two of us and over 50 years of experience, I think this last year we have sold more new builds than ever. And I, I can say that than ever in my career. So that's not the case for me back. Um, but in the last, since the market crashed for me, yes. But prior to the market, um, new builds was one of my um, my fortes. I, I sold more new builds than I did resale or listings. But Between, you specifically say, went down that route. 2003 you... to 2006, 2007, I was just popping out there with the new yeah. builds. But you That's were sitting good. new builds back then, right? Well, yeah, I would, I would, um, I worked with the sales offices. So if they had a home to sell, then I would list those homes. But also um, if they needed somebody to assist on the busy weekends, because that was a rush during that time. It was, oh, it yeah. was really, really fast paced. Um, so I would host in the sales office with them, mostly at uh, Fulton Homes mm -hmm. um, or Woodside Homes. But uh, yeah. I got a lot of buyers um, from that aspect as well as listings. So yeah. yeah, so I will take that back too because back then I was doing a lot of new builds as well. But back then you actually had investors that were just flipping the paper like crazy. They were buying and now the contracts have in them that you can't do that. So the builders yeah. don't allow that anymore. But I think, yeah, there was a spurt of time where there was a lot of new builds. But yeah. since that period, mm -hmm. this year sold more new builds than ever and they're well, just curious. Curious, great deals I'm, I'm curious what the market would look like if they didn't have those rate buy downs in other words if if they were at oh, par yeah. with the rest of the market would new builds be as attractive as they are now and i i think the short answer is no no um, and how long do you think those rate buy downs will continue well i think um it's it's going to continue for a bit now because they have they were so far behind on their build and construction process because they were, you know, they weren't able to get the supplies they needed. So now they have so many all in production to try to catch up that I feel like they're going to have to keep that interest rate um, buy down option available. Well, that's uh, they, they kind of buy them in blocks, don't they, Pat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, from what I understand, I, I like to dig into that a little bit further and understand a little bit further from what uh, they, they buy them in, they buy them in tranches. You know, they will probably do a forward contract. Uh, you know, they do some hedging probably. Is, I'm I, like, I'm going to do some more digging on that. But you know, from what I understand or read, that they'll hedge and you know buy a tranche of five hundred million dollars, you know, worth of, of uh, and it's kind of like when it's gone. I think, uh, and I, I was reading too that uh, it. I read something that, you know, the, these incentives might start going away. You know, they might start going away a little bit here. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's tough. I, I mean. I think that is the case, Pat. Um, for example, DR Horton. Um, I do a lot of mobile notary or a lot of in-house notary for them. At the end of the month, they, they try to close all their properties at the end of a month. So um, I did notice that in December, January, February, there were more incentives towards the buyers um, as far as buying down the interest rate they were giving them an additional ten thousand on their closing costs and stuff but those are they are tapering off as far as what they're offering them so that's just one example that i know you know personal dr horton is lessening what they are giving they're not giving that i mean some some were twenty thousand dollars on top of the buy rate. Yeah. Right. And I yeah. noticed that too. So DR Horton, I had looked at DR Horton uh, back in January with another client that with, went with a Centex. And back then they were offering 20,000 in concessions on top of the buy down. 
-hmm. And this time it was 5,000 in concessions. Well, we're seeing some of that in the resale market where, you know, we hit a peak up here of, of seller concessions at $9,700, 51%. Now we're at 42% at 8550 Not a big dip down, but it is a little bit smaller. I expect that to climb up a little bit this month when that reading comes out, just because rates went up. But uh, we were starting to trend down as supply dwindled, and now... Um, you know, we may see a little bit more of that, but the, when you, I, I kind of like the market where it is right now um, in that it's not crazy, but it's interesting when they look at sales per month, uh, we're within 2000 units a month of what was considered typical. So it's not as dire as, as people think we, when it comes to sales per month, it's just that on a percentage basis compared to 2021 and early 2022 it's down 47 percent but we forget that those sales were 47 percent higher than what was typical mm -hmm. right yeah. and i think what happened back then rick is there was a lot of people that were thinking about moving in the next couple of years because i've had a lot of clients tell me this and those low rates pulled them forward so instead of buying in 2022 or 2023 they went ahead and bought then because it, it was an anomaly, those rates. So if, I, I think our sales not just being down because of lack of inventory, but also because a lot of those buyers got pulled forward and bought earlier than what they expected or wanted to. Yeah, it's it's, it's, a, it's a strange, strange market. But I um, boy, it'd be nice if we could just hold and not get down to a low interest rate that sparks a buying spree again. It would be nice to sit here for a while. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we can. I mean, our our financial situation in the country is just really strange. Um, <clears throat> you know, we finally reached some kind of an early agreement on the uh, on the debt limit, and I don't know if you heard Pat, but they it, what they did was they suspended the debt ceiling. In other words, mm -hmm. they just said, "Oh, okay. Well, we no longer have one." <laughs> mm -hmm. That. That's yeah. the oddest thing. They didn't say let's raise it by two trillion or three trillion. They said, well, let's just suspend it for two years. Let's pretend it doesn't exist, which it really didn't yeah. exist anyway. I always thought it was the dumbest thing. I did that with my credit card balances too. I just say, yeah, I don't have, a, I don't have a limit. Yeah, let's just. Why is this credit, uh, card, you know, why is this credit card company keep calling me? You know, why is it yeah, saying, hey, didn't we suspend that? So, <laughs> it's a, why did I get this French word called de declining? declining you know <laughs> but uh oh, thing which we could do so yeah now is there any earth shattering uh i mean there you had the jobs report i understand the inflation data from the european union was actually pretty good uh, yeah it was good yeah the bond market a little bit but anything else yeah. coming out next week that you think is on the radar not just the BLS. I mean, uh, we get the BLS report tomorrow, and then uh, I, in terms of next week, I gotta save some. I gotta save some material for our, our thing tomorrow. So I can't. I can't. You know, yeah. I can't throw yeah, everything right. out at, on this show. I gotta spread my wealth of information over a couple of shows. <laughs> but, I uh, think that's I mean, called. I think that's called a hook. Yeah, it's called. A, yeah, it's called a. Hey, there you hook. go. But um, no, I mean, you know, I think it's gonna be more Joshy. Wait till you know we got two weeks of uh, you know waiting on the Fed. See what they do. Uh, that'll give us, you know, some more guidance. But you know, this debt ceiling. You know, I I think I said this a week ago. You know, it's just it's it was news for a bit. Now it's gonna be the same old, same old. So now it, the main thing is to find out what the what these um, these jokers at the Federal Reserve will do. Um, you know, a couple of guys are you know saying they should raise them. Some say we should pause. So there's gonna be some jockeying going around. But Barry says that the shelter. We're seeing inflation behind the scenes kind of subsiding. It's not; it's still there, but it's, it's subsiding. So he said the shelter costs are coming down. Shelter is up, I believe it's 43% of the uh, core CPI, 40 or 43% of the core CPI. So he goes, they're coming, it's coming down. Um, it's still high, you know, a little bit higher, but it's, it's, we're not seeing the increases that we saw in the last 12 months. So you know, I think it's just going to be more jostling around here in the in the short term. Pat, I got a question for you. So mm -hmm. I, I noticed that, what is it, the Chicago, whatever it is, the CME, where you watch the percentage of the 
a possible rate hike mm -hmm. and it had been like 17 then it went to 30s and then it went up to 64 and then i noticed it's dropped back down into like the 50s or something last time i checked um do you think that was tied to the debt ceiling and then do you also think oh, yeah. that if oh, yeah. they do raise the rates a quarter point that's already been baked in too yeah i mean i a quarter point it's kind of like um whether we they raise or not i i just i mean they're baking this in i think the market knows it's the fed is going to be slowing down here a quarter point i don't think you're going to see i mean i've been wrong one other time in my life but i i don't think um it's already been you know some of this news has already been talked about you know we're past i mean you got we had a big jolt 12 to 14 months ago when the fed started really cranking up rates now we're just kind of the seas have been rough, rough, and, you know, we're used to these rough seas now, you know, so it's like, okay, and we're not seeing those, you know, those days where, as I always say, you want to puke, you know, <laughs> it's just like, oh, my God, what's going on here? Um, like you said, we saw today, the market was up 30 basis points on the on the five and a half coupons, so, and like you guys said before, people are kind of getting used to the mid, mid sixes, high sixes, and you know, I, I just think there's, I, and I said this back in the beginning of the year, I think this is going to be a year of muddling along, you know? So you, you just went from a uh, show tease to a spoiler alert, just like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I get going. Well, Dan, anyway. thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming on. It's good to see everybody again. And, uh, you know, even though um, we hardly ever see each other in person when I'm in Phoenix, I still feel like I'm, very far away from you guys. Yeah. I, can, I, can, I can feel you. I can touch you. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope All right. let's hope the technology never gets that good, Pat. So <laughs> touch it. Touch it. <laughs> All right. Everybody have a great weekend. Take care. All right. You too. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.